Hello YouTube! I'm back, or at least I'm trying to be. It has been a minute since I have been here on YouTube. If you've been following me on social media, you know a little bit uh, why that's been going on, why it's been so long since we've been able to make YouTube videos. But I am going to be making some videos here on YouTube to kind of catch you up on everything that has happened over this past basically year. I've had a whole bunch of craziness going on, but mostly in all good ways. So I'm going to make videos to kind of catch you up on what's been happening. So that should be a lot of fun. But today I really, really wanted to make our 2021-22 curriculum homeschool video because school is about to start for most of you and... I know some of you are still making your last minute curriculum decisions, so I hope that this is a blessing or it at least gives you some ideas maybe. So we're going to dig right into it. Let's go. Okay, so this year I have a preschooler and a third grader. I also have a not quite two year old running around also. But as far as our school goes, we got a three year old and an eight year old. So there's a bit of a gap there in grades. Um, so some of my decisions on the curriculum that I chose this year was because I really wanted to try as much as I could to do some group subjects, so to speak, so that they could kind of both be involved together in some of our stuff anyway. Um, so that's partly why I made these decisions. So I'm hoping it's all going to go pretty smoothly. So let's dig right into it. Last year, uh, we went with Masterbooks. And for the most part, it was great. It gave us a lot of freedom to kind of move things around as needed. Because like I said before, we kind of had a crazy year, a lot of stuff going on. Um, so that was great. There was really only a couple of little issues with a couple of our subjects. Um, and it was stuff you didn't even really realize was a problem until we were about halfway through the school year anyhow. So we just kind of pushed through and it was perfectly fine. Um, but coming into this year, I did look at a lot of other curriculum choices, but I ended up landing on Masterbooks again. And that was because everything that last year did not have, I feel like we got it this year for her grade level. So, and also it kind of works well in with my whole group subject idea for a couple of these things anyway. So I'm excited about that. Okay, so the first one that we're going to talk about is science. Last year, um, Celeste was doing the Adventures In series for Masterbooks. Um, which was fine. It was fun. But the things that I didn't like about it um, was it had a little bit of information over a bunch of different subjects. And for Celeste, it just was a little too scattered. So while she had fun with it and we learned about a lot of different things, she didn't really retain a whole lot of the information. She just needs something that is maybe a little bit more focused and simplified for this year. So I was really excited when I looked into their life series for science, the God's Design Life. This is the Life for Beginners, which is, I believe, supposed to be for grades one through two. But reading all of the reviews and listening to other parents, they were saying that they really liked this one for their third graders because the next uh, level up, which is just the life, not the life for beginners. Um, just the vernacular and things like that were a little bit over their heads and they felt that this was just a little bit more appropriate for third grade. So um, skimming through it and stuff, I really like it too because I think this will be an easy one for my preschooler to follow along with to some degree. I think that I can maybe do some simple little printables for her also um, so she can kind of follow along with it. But what I love about this one is that it covers three basic subjects. So this year it's plants, the human body, and animals. And I think that'll be great because these subjects weren't really covered at all last year. So this is everything that last year wasn't. So I'm excited about this one a lot. 
So next we have math, and this year she is doing the Lessons for a Living Education Math Level 3, which is supposed to be right on par for third grade. Now I did have Celeste do the readiness test that Masterbooks has on their website. It's a PDF that you can print out or copy. And um, I was really glad that we did that because it made me feel a little bit more confident that with some review going into it, I think she'll be just fine doing the third grade one. She's one that loves math, so I also have a little um, supplement book all going along with this as well um, that should be fun. I'll show you that in a second. Um, what I love about Masterbooks Math is it goes, it's very Charlotte Mason style for starters, so it has sort of a story that flows through it, which keeps my kiddo engaged with it anyway. Um, but also it has one concept that rolls very fluidly into the next, so... I like that a lot. It isn't broken up and a little bit more confusing, which was something that we experienced a bit um, when Celeste was still in public school, kinder through first grade. So I really love Masterbooks math, um, and I love how they have all their manipulatives and everything in here, just pages to tear out that you can laminate, and then you can add other things to it kind of as you see fit. So anyway, this is what we are doing for our core curriculum for math this year. Okay, so the other supplemental um, math thing that I am doing for Celeste is this fun book that I found at Sam's Club of all places. I bet you you can get it on Amazon though, although I, I haven't looked, so don't take my, uh, my word on that. It's Dinosaurs Math Missions, and it has this calculator that is built into it. I think you can pop it out when you're done. But the book folds open. And then every page or section is like a new little mission. And the whole idea is to sort of teach them how to use a calculator, which is really cool. Um, and I don't think it says on here specifically what grade level this is for. But I mean, it doesn't really go beyond multiplication. It's all pretty simple stuff. So I think this will be a really good level for her. So I'm kind of excited about this one. This is a really fun book and she really likes math. So it's easy for me to throw in a little extra on subjects that she really is interested in. Okay, so next we have our language arts course that we are doing and it is the Language Lessons for a Living Education Level 3. Um, we did level two last year and it went really well. Celeste really likes the activities and the stories and things that are in it. And what I love about it this year, flipping through it, is they've added a lot of poetry and a lot of independent writing and things in it, which is something that Celeste needs a little bit of work on for sure. And it was uh, much more sporadic in last year's curriculum. So um, I'm excited to get into this one. It's a pretty big, hefty book. So, but what I like about this is it is a little bit easier to skip through it. So if you have things that your kid is really proficient on, you can kind of just skip over some of that stuff, but it has a lot of review if you have a kiddo that needs a little bit more work in one specific area. So I really like these and this is what we are doing for our language arts. Okay, so last year we did a, uh, a social studies course and it was the master books, My Story. Uh, my Story, My World, I think was the one that we did. Um, and I had, although it was fine, I did have similar issues that with that that I had with the math or I'm sorry, with the science, um, that it covered a whole bunch of different subjects, but just like a teeny tiny bit. So like each week you would have one to three different countries that you were, you know, learning about, but it was just a very, I don't know, it didn't feel like there was a whole lot of meat and potatoes to it. Um, and a lot of the, the questions and things for the quizzing that they would ask about it Again, I just don't really feel like Celeste retained a lot of the information. Like if you were to go back now and ask her about, you know, whatever specific country, she really would not be able to tell you hardly anything about it. Now, it was fun because it was sort of a, a global lesson. It talked about, you know, the whole world, all the countries. Um, and we had a big map that went with it, and it was a lot of fun that way. But it didn't even really get to America at all until the very very end of the course 
Um, and at that point, you know, we were kind of at the end of the school year and we were just finishing things up and it really didn't tell you all that much to begin with. So this year, I really wanted to do an American history course and Masterbooks just happens to have a really fantastic one. So this is their America's Story. Um, they have America's Story. This is one. They have one through three. And I believe the level is supposed to be third through sixth grade. So you could do one every year for those three years and have American history through all of them. Anyway, so they suggest that you start, though, at um, America's Story 1. So this is, um, this starts out from the ancient Americas to the Great Gold Rush. And then the next section for two, I can't remember what that is. But then on number three, it goes from, I can't remember what, but it goes until modern times. And so it kind of breaks it up very nicely. So I'm really excited to do American history this year. We're starting with this one. And I mean, if we like it, I bet you we will go through one and two over the next couple of years. So this should be great. Um, American history was something that I really wanted to get started with for a couple of different reasons. One, I feel it's going to be a little bit more focused, but really learning the history of our country um, is something I would love to really start with her. So I got quite a few other supplemental books that I'm going to show you really quick. And part of this is just um, sort of adding to our library. Some of these are way over her grade level, but I just kind of want to keep adding to our library so that we have these books on hand because I'll be honest, I don't know or I'm not maybe 100% confident on how much longer we will be able to actually get or have these kind of books available to us. So I'm excited to start learning um, more of that with my kids and we'll go through these books really quick. So I wanted to keep a lot of this history very basic with a lot of facts and not a ton of opinions. That is something that I really um, wanted to have on hand. So I have a lot of these smaller books that just have like documents in them. So this one, for instance, is Documents of Freedom, and it has the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution of the United States, and also George Washington's Farewell Address. It just literally has these three documents in it. It's all in plain, plain print though, so it's very easy to read. So it's good to have that one on hand. Um, I also have a very similar one that is on the Second Amendment. We've got one for America's Godly Heritage, and this just talks about um, basically what the country was founded on. I think this also goes over things like the, uh, what were they called, the fighting reverends and different things like that. Again, just a lot of, you know, history, like, facts, so I thought this one was fun. Uh, this is one that is obviously way over our my kids grade level, but I'm just excited to read it myself And I think that one day I'll be able to kind of do this as like a read aloud with Celeste But this one's called Wives of the Signers, the women behind the Declaration of Independence And I just I think this one is going to be really cool. It has, you know, actual um, If I can find one portraits in here of a lot of these women and it just kind of gives sort of that backstory that you don't really hear in the history books about the ladies and everything that they did sort of behind the scenes. And it's it's very fascinating to me anyway. So that one's fun. Um, another one I got was America's His or American History in Black and White. And this goes over a lot of our African-American founders and just a lot of the history there. Again, just a lot of facts, which I really love. This one is on separation of church and state and what the founders meant. So this is just kind of like an explanation, almost like a booklet. Um, but it, it, it really summed it up. I liked how this one was. Um, now this one is actually a workbook, a social study activity book is what they're calling it, but it's a workbook. It has a test in it and everything. And it's about understanding the U.S. Constitution. I would say that this one is probably getting closer to middle school level. Um, but it was something that was actually on sale also, so I really wanted to snag it. So this is going to be here on the shelf for when we need it. 
Now I have other books and I am planning on just kind of continually having a little trickle in of books to add to our library on history, particularly of this country. So, but those are just the ones that I recently purchased to kind of go along, hopefully, with our American history course. Okay, that is pretty much it for Celeste's core curriculum. We have a lot of um, read aloud books and, and games and activities and stuff, but I'm going to do a completely separate video for all of that. I'm going to wrap this up with preschool really quick, though. One last thing. I knew I was forgetting something. Um, Celeste really wants to learn cursive this year. We started a little bit of it last year, but we were still kind of working on just some regular handwriting stuff. We had the um, Handwriting Without Tears series, which was great. But um, And I, I may get their cursive uh, book as well, but this was just one that I picked up. It's one of these school zone books that you can get almost anywhere. Um, and this is on just cursive, writing and drawing tablet. Um, it's fun. It has some stickers in it, but it just starts out with like your basic alphabet pages, but then it moves into um, simple sentences. And then it also kind of has some fun picture drawing stuff to go along with it as well. Um, and then it has a bunch of independent um, like blank pages in the pack back as well and I love these books that have the big cardboard piece in the back so that if they are sitting on a couch or even you're taking it with you in the car or something it's like really firm it doesn't bend a whole lot so anyway this is the other thing that we're going to be doing kind of on the side as well okay preschool all right I'm just going to say it I feel like preschool is one of these levels that should be very child led and of course this is just my opinion and if your kiddo is completely different the more power to you you do what is right for your kiddos um and what i mean by child led is if i have my pre preschooler she's three years old okay if i have a little one like that that really wants to actually dig into a book they really want to, for instance, like mine, she really wants to go along and do everything that her older sister is doing. Um, and, you know, they want to get involved with this stuff. Then I feel like you should just give them everything that they want, all that they need, and just kind of roll with it. But if you have a little one that is very resistant to actually getting into book work or sitting down and focusing on specific little tasks... I really don't feel that that is something that should be pushed. Um, I've seen how that can kind of cause issues down the road. Um, I mean, they're three years old, got lots of time to get started. So everything that I have chosen for my preschooler this year is just solely based on how she is, and I'm kind of just letting her take the lead on this as well. So um, this is a book that I'm actually really excited about because um, I was actually planning on putting something together just like this in a binder, but then I happened to just find one of these binder books that pretty much had everything in it already. So I'm excited about that. Um, I know that you can get this on Amazon. Um, this is the Get Ready for School. This is for pre-K, pre and yes, I have a preschooler, but I feel like she will be able to do the majority of this. It's a Black Dog and Leventhal Publishers. But anyway, this is what it looks like. I know that you can find it on Amazon. I actually found this one, again, at Sam's Club of all places. I just happened to find it on the shelf. I love their book section going through there because you can find good little finds on there. Um, okay, so anyway, what this is covering is letters, numbers, tracing, colors, shapes, craft, science, and my world. Um, so it's all kind of your basic stuff, but one of the things I really love about this is all the different subjects are color-coded. I don't know if you can see that. So my plan is to get those reusable tabs and actually put them on the individual subjects for the day that we are on or just wherever we left off whenever it was. So it'll be really easy to turn to it because it's just, there's quite a few um, pages in here. Also, these are all tear-out pages. They're all perforated. So if I wanted to tear these out and actually put it in Celeste's daily folders as well, then that's something that we could do. All your basic kind of stuff, it kind of starts out with tracing and then it gets into the alphabet um, and I believe numbers, colors, shapes, 
Um, some of the science stuff might be a little bit much, but I mean, really, it just covers like the seasons, and I think it has something on weather as well. Um, in the back, though, it's pretty cute on the My World or All About Me section that they have. It's all about like their likes and their dislikes and sort of like tracing their hands and their eye color and hair color and things. And so I think that is kind of something special that you could actually save. Um, and then it has some scissor skills, crafts in the very back, just some little things to cut out. And then they have a little certificate in the very back. So I'm excited. This is probably going to be like our main, you know, workbook that she is going to work out of. Um, and that's kind of it to some degree. Now, I do have a couple other things here. I have a couple of these wipe clean books that she's kind of been playing with for a long time. And, you know, it's the ones with the dry erasers. Um, and these are good. I feel like the dry erasers are sometimes a little bit hard for little ones because it's so slippery. And they really like to kind of squish them at that age. But these are fun for when I just kind of need to give her something because she wants to work on something, but I don't have the time to actually sit there and do it with her because I'm doing something with her older sister. I can give her one of these and she can just kind of go to town. I don't really have to worry about what it is she's doing. She's just working on those pen, pen skills. <laughs> um, I also got another one of these big preschool books. It's these school zone ones. You can get these at Target, Walmart, I think even the dollar store a lot of times. And it's all the basic stuff. It's just tracing, colors, numbers, letters, um, some little mazes and activities and stuff like that. These are really fun for on the go if you just kind of want to give them something. Because, I mean, I think this whole book was literally like five bucks. So I don't really worry too much about how she's going at it. So if she gets a little crazy, it's not the end of the world. Now, last but not least, I had to show you guys this because I thought it was really cute. Um, this is something that my mom actually got for Aurora this past year. Um, this is a preschool learning pack and this one's theme, cause I know they have different ones is all about big cats, tigers. Um, this is also a school zone product. Um, and it's fun because it's portable. You, so if you are traveling or something, you can really take it with you and it really does like stay all together. So on the very back, they have a little board game. Um, and start to open it up and it has a little like counting mat and then when you open all of this oh and I see my kids have gotten into it so it's falling all over the place hold please okay I should have known better I should have looked at this before I was on camera um, okay so up here they have a couple of different packs of cards I'm trying to keep them from falling out um, that has to do with like matching um, numbers and counting and like matching pictures and things like that. They're double sided. These cards are maybe a little bit more advanced than my preschooler. It's about matching um, the letter with the sound of the word kind of a thing. So these will be fun for, you know, some time. Has this little pen pack that comes out. It has some safety scissors, a dry erase marker, and a big fat pencil. So that's fun. Um, so down here, so it comes with a little DVD and this has like different songs and things like that on it. It has a couple of these, what they're calling easy reader books, um, like deals with simple concepts. This is like Charlie is a dog. Um, is Charlie big? No. Or is Charlie small? No. Charlie is big. He likes to dig that kind of thing. So just, you know, simple concepts. Um, it comes with this little parent guide, which is just, it tells you how to do like all of the games and things. And then this comes with another little workbook and it is all the same kind of stuff. It's just tracing, colors, numbers, shapes, that sort of thing. But what is cool is it comes with one of these little laminated sleeves. So, oh, it has a bunch of sticker pages in here also. Um, sorry, let me do this really quick. You can just slip it on one of these pages like this and they use the dry erase marker and so you can actually use these pages over and over again or they can go at it with an actual pencil. So that is pretty cool. Um, and then the other thing that they have is these little boards for different games and activities. 
So like this one is about patterns, creating and continuing patterns. This one is about matching numbers and colors. This one is a big, medium, and small activity. And this one is like um, a letter matching and memory game. I think you can do more than one thing with a lot of these. So, and we've already gotten into this, but it comes with all of these little um, cardboard pop-out pieces. So this one, for instance, um, like these little dots, these are for making or continuing your patterns. But then on the other side, they have numbers and colors. So it's like you can match the number and the color kind of thing. Um, and then it has things like these little animal um, pieces that you have to cut out. And this is for like the big, medium, and small matching kind of thing. Anyway, and they just tuck into their own little thing. So this one is just fun. I know that you can find various different little packs just like this um, on Amazon in different places. So that was something fun that I would just share with you guys because um, I know they have a lot of those like busy books or busy packs kind of like this. And, you know, they come in handy if you are just kind of bored with the same old, same old or if they are traveling or anything like that. So those are fun as well. All right, guys, that is it for me today. I hope this has given you some ideas or encouragement, and I can't wait to get back on here with more videos. We're going to continue to kind of create a space and get some better equipment and stuff for these YouTube videos. So everything should just get better from here on out. That is the hope anyway. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't, don't forget to subscribe and leave me a like. And yeah, follow us on social media for more daily content also. Y'all have a blessed school year.